Oh, we're live. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Would you like to introduce the event or me? Oh. <laughs> I thought we were doing the intro first, but <laughs> Oh, I mean we can introduce ourselves first then. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm Fizzle. I've played Tetris since uh about seven years ago, six years ago. But I I've not played as much uh, in recent years. Uh, but I still follow, like, uh, Puyo Puyo Tetris, uh, somewhat, but not as much on the Tetris side, so, uh, I think it'll be pretty interesting to see, like, uh, the players here today, for me. I'm Ben, and I'm a community leader in the Tetris community. <laughs> um, I own NMC, which has over 3,000 members, and it, it stands for Modern Minion Community, and we host a lot of events and tournaments. And I'm also a top 100 Tetris player. Been around since 2017, roughly. I guess that's it. What a gamer. So, introduce the format. We're doing counterpick 5v5 crew battles. Is that what you like to explain? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, in a crew battle format, in other games, usually um, people have like stocks that uh, run out. But what we do instead here is um in 5v5 teams they will have five separate 1v1s uh with the first picks being blind picks and after that the winner of each uh of each match will play or will select their player first and then the opposing team will have about three minutes to do research and make a counter pick on their player and then the points will get added up at the end and whichever team scores the most total points wins so there's actually some strategy here in, in trying to pick the p best player for every matchup and saying, um, saving your better players, I think. But we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, we'll also be using a Swiss format, so uh, it's not every double elimination. Yeah. yeah, every team will have a match every round. Uh, you won't be eliminated or anything. Tonight, we will... Be watching Cornell versus um, uh, Polytechnic something. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I forgot the name. <laughs> oh boy, I just. Cornell has two absences. That's going to be a rough start for them. Is WPI is Worcester Polytechnic Institute, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the first to admit, I have no idea how to say that word. <laughs> oh my god, Kabuza Pie plays Geometry Dash. That is a banger level, I I respect that. I love that level. <laughs> yeah, due to the Top format... the Extreme Demon. Yeah, due oh, to the ahead. format, um... Uh, teams are allowed sub-ins for absent players, but they were not able to find sub-ins. So, uh, with two missing players, uh, Cornell is starting 14 to 0, or yes. rather 0 to 14. Because each set is first to 7, yeah. so they're just starting up two sets, unfortunately. And now they'll double blind decide how to, um, who to send out first. So, in the end, there'll only be three players from each team, but we'll get to see how they play. And. I'm not very familiar with players from either team, so looks up, looks like we have Maze and Yenses coming up next. Uh, Fizzo, do you know these players? <laughs> I I have not heard of either of these, uh, to be quite honest. Well, Yenses is a Genshin player, so that's going to be a buff, of course. Ah, uh, yes, I do <laughs> see the Kazuha profile picture. <laughs> mm, good taste. Kazuha is very good. And the maze, of course, has the maze profile picture. Let's go. <laughs> Banger production. I I agree. Blue is doing great. She is streaming this from her laptop, and doing an amazing job so far. As always. So our players will be warming up right now, and after that, we'll be heading straight into the mesh. I would guess these pairs are at least. SS rank? Just a rough guess, I'm not sure. But 
At that rank, I'm going to expect a lot of down stacking. Mm. Have some up stacking attempts at spiking, but mostly down stacking. What do you think, Fazil? Yeah, I think generally, um, at different levels, we'll see different metas taking shape because of the skills available to the players. Mm. Um, generally, I would imagine that openers play a big role because that's how they know how to send the most consistent damage. That is a very good prediction, as we see both players starting with Stick and DT. But unfortunately, yeah. Jens has misdropped the DT cannon and looks to be in a pretty rough spot already. Yeah, that was a pretty rough start. <laughs> Maze also misdropped the stick spin, so there seems to be nerves on both sides. So it was a good warm up for both of them heading into this match. Yeah, I will imagine that it's. I would imagine that it's most players' first competitive experience because. Oh, know, absolutely. Tetris like, competitions generally are not known for being gigantic. <laughs> mm. And we've seen a lot of recruiting being done for uh, teams with, you know, some newer players to fill in the spots. Absolutely. Here we see, um, Maze just misdropped the stick spin again. And Jensen is going into this with a beautiful center well. Oh, and the misdrop! A bit rough for both players, but they seem to be in a decent position so far. Yeah, now Jensen has a bit of a tough situation, just gonna start down stacking, I think. Generally, when you're that high up with a 9-0, you don't want to get too greedy. Maze misses a kill there with a T-spin, but looks to be in a great position and might still be able to pick up the win. Ooh. And there we go. The I missed drop might have been pretty bad if they didn't uh, if they didn't end the round there. Nerves are a factor we are seeing. Yeah. Another stick from Maze with the early O. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cancel. I'm not sure I like that. Jensis has the LST going. It's looking good. Oh, the garbage! What a perfect well, wow. That is beautiful. There's a continuation. There. Ooh, oh. Misses it, but still in good position. Just get down from there. Maze is finding it rough to send an attack right now. There's no easy Tetris available, but there is a T-spin. I will, Maze will go for it. Jensis is very high up. Yeah, Maze actually has to use the T for their overhang there, because they... Uh, wasted their pieces uh, just up stacking. I am seeing some decently clean down stack here coming in from Jens's oh until that T-spin, but there's still a way down. Still looks fine. Wow. And Jens's is safe, it looks like. Interesting donation. Uh, I'm not sure if I love it, but you know. It... Donations hit works. Sure. It does work, yeah. If it works, it works. I think donations generally just you gotta go for it until you figure out what's what's good. <laughs> PCL from both sides. Perfectly opening. Sends 10 lines, 11 lines for Maze. Jensis does not have PC. Yeah, Jensis is a blast. I, I for the wonder, fire. How, how powerful would you... Or I guess not powerful, but... You know, how would you rate PCO on Tetrio? Because, you know, I don't play Tetrio, but to me it seems like a pretty big gamble. I would not... I would generally try to avoid it. In my opinion, so... Um, second PC is very close to 100%, right? If you get off the first PC. But many mm -hmm. players don't actually learn it. Unfortunately, that's the biggest strength of the second PC, is that you actually can't kill with it. The first PC doesn't kill. Yeah. And the other player can usually just send the first PC right back. Mm -hmm. So if you are learning one PC, I would highly recommend learning the second. Mm -hmm. Right, Jensis picks up another win as we see another stick spin from Maze. I don't think this is the right continuation. It's looking right for Maze. Jensis picks another one up with 108 APM. Excellent game. Well done. <laughs> this looks like... Ooh, that's not stick, that's another LST. Never seen such committal to the TKI before. <laughs> I respect that. TKI is a great opener. I respect it too. <laughs> I love, I love it. TKI. I love it. Good stuff. Jens is looking to get down. Oh, Miz high up again. And needs the 180 from the J. Needs the 180. There's no time for it. It's looking rough. I think Jens has actually timed that, or, or tried to at least a... They went for a T-spin single because they saw Maze was near the top and just hoped it would kill. 
didn't quite Good kill, strategy. but it definitely, you know, definitely wasn't helping. <laughs> oh, gets the worst possible garbage for their TKI continuation. No. Oh. Ah. Now Maze with the 100 AP on. <laughs> <laughs> Both players yeah, training blows. Could be anyone's game right now. PCL for Maze? Oh, oh miss drops. Okay, but this is what I'm saying here though. The second PC coming in would actually have killed if Jensen didn't have a down stack, but the first PC wasn't even close to killing. And that's why yeah. I think only one PC is a very big gamble, mm -hmm. not highly recommended. Even if you aren't that familiar with second, just going for the second gives you a much higher chance of winning than just going for the first PC. Yeah, I think I would agree. And you can even see, like, you know, not to, not to discredit Maze, but... I think it was pretty clear they weren't super familiar with the second PC uh, continuation. They just kind of made like a more jank PCO shape. <laughs> but I that's, mean, you still got it, so you know that's what happens when you go for things. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> the second PC is just one of the easier PCs, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you can't just accidentally find one. Maze looking to pull off a rough survival here. It doesn't happen, unfortunately. Yeah, Yensis did a great job pressuring Maze there at the top. And Yensis is already up 5-2, to two, looking to get a lead for, um... Are they on Cornell? Are they what? Cornell or, um, WPI? I believe, I believe Yensis is on Cornell. So they're gonna need this lead, I believe? Yeah. Wait, wait, who has the lead? <laughs> if they if they okay. lose more than a few, yeah. they might they might be the end of the road. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cornell needs the lead because Cornell is down 14 points already. So Jensen's getting a lead here to start would be great for the Cornell team going forward. <clears throat> Mace, good pressure though, and Jensen is pretty stuck here. There's down stacks, but oh no, with that, I don't like that. There's a lot of pieces to get down from this situation. A bad habit I see from players at this level is just going faster when they're near the top, but it's often better to go slower and find the most optimal down stack. Here, it does work for Jensis though, so credit where credit's due, Jensis is out. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that sentiment too. Um, and another thing when they go fast is a lot of players that aren't super familiar with down stack patterns will start to... They'll just take whatever immediately brings them down the lowest with their like immediate piece which is usually actually not the correct play down stacking is, is like one of the most unintuitive parts of modern tetris or any tetris yeah the best down stackers will always make what really looks like misdrops to me as well yeah <laughs> but it's optimal <laughs> somehow yeah. it just doesn't make much sense you have yeah. to think ahead Jensen's looking clean here. Wait, 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 look! Jensen's excellent pressure here with the Tetris well. Now they're on match they're point too. Guys. Excellent start for Cornell so far. Let's see if Jensen's can finish it out here and start to take back some of the lead that WPI already has. Stick coming in. Oh, the cancel. I, I don't like that. Here we see the stick is it clears and it's already above the well, so you really don't want to cancel that. You want the garbage, so we can spike and kill Yenses here. Maze looking a bit pressured here. Has a down stack, needs to cancel. Yeah, Still I, high actually, up. I actually do wonder as well um, how many players at this level are actually worrying about cancels and timing in their openings. Because I think, even for me, when you know, sometimes I just autopilot, I kind of just start trying to do my opener as fast as I can and get my APM up. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes, the stat farming. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the game though. Maze is having a very rough time getting down, but so is Yensa, it's just being pressured up while trying to pressure. And they're both at the top, it's looking rough for Yensa's here. Maze has a spike! Follow through? Oh, that's massive! Wow. What a comeback from Maze here, after getting instantly pressured up by Yenses. So for Stickspin, um, the biggest um, power of Stickspin is actually the counter spike potential, where you have a C-spin above the well that your opponent gives you. 
Just sending a stick, uh, stick spin does not kill. Sending a stick spin plus a massive spike from your opponent's garbage oh is what kills. Oh god, what a spike. That is exactly what I'm talking about here! <laughs> Look at he that, that's why he's commentary and said, I will give you an example. <laughs> Metafire.gg slash benxt. <laughs> here we have another space. Oh, it passes through, that's perfect! But, oh, may stacks above the well. I don't like that. Still might be able to find our way down. No, but oh, no. Jensis gets spiked out by just the stick. Yeah, Jensis can't can't let too many more of these slip through, or else uh, it's a uh, it's over for Cornell. Immediately, there goes the lead. It's already an even game, and Jensis at one point was up five to two. Yeah. Trying to get down for Jensis, maze with a rough position, but. With the JPs, you can fix it out. And they are oh, out. Using their IPs for that. Looks fine too. Oh, ooh, it's a bit dirty from Maze, but it should work out because Jensis is also stuck as well. Can't downside with that. Good TPs. Good hold. Yeah. I was worried they were going to use their S there. <laughs> is this a four wide attempt from Maze? That is a very high spire above the garbage well there, but it looks like Maze will find the down stack, and Maze is very clean here. Looking to spike the small two wide sending some cheese over here. Mm. Jensis cancels with a 12 spike. Good oh, a missed drop on the IP, so it might be over. Oh no, oh no, that that's so rough for Maze here. Oh no. It will be game. So, Jensis brings it back a little. Well, um, WPI is still up a 19 to 7. But a good effort from Jensis to lower the lead. Very good attempt that we saw here. Yeah, that was a. Uh, that was starting to get a lot of hand for Cornell. Or for WPI. If they kept going, then Cornell would have had no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, WPI is starting with a humongous lead here. But with the win from Jensis, hopefully they can start to mount a comeback for their re remaining players. Like it's yeah. absolutely still possible given the current situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two players up seven. If they win, if, if they win both sweeps, then it will be twenty-one to nineteen. So <laughs> Cornell cannot afford to lose two games. It is that close yeah. right now. So uh, we're going to need a massive effort here from Cornell, but it is absolutely possible. Right, starting second player from both teams, I believe the loser, uh, the winner chooses first. Correct yes, me if I'm wrong. that is that is correct. And then the opposing team will get uh, several minutes to decide a counter pick. So Cornell here will have to send out a player, and WPI should have five different picks. Or Cornell, no, uh, the PI has. Um, Cornell has two absences, so Cornell is missing two players. They will have to send out one of their two remaining players, unfortunately. I have seen the Super Shockies avatar somewhere before. I think just chilling on Discord, but I don't actually know anything about them. <laughs> I think you've played some Geometry Dash before. I no, but I mean, like, I've seen that, I think I've seen that on Discord, is what I mean. <laughs> I believe Super Shockey is very well known in a Tetris community that many of us follow. Oh. Oops. <laughs> and look who's getting sent out here, Super Shockey. Possibly the best player on Cornell's team. I believe Super Shockey is either very high U or low X. Oh, wow. But that remains to be seen. A very good player. And WPI will be looking to counter that with whoever they send out next. And can someone in chat tell us who Super Shocky is, real quick? I think it's yes. one percent, right? Okay, TEC. That would make sense. Super Shocky is a very good TEC player. Uh... So a lot of that skill does translate to Tetris. Most TEC is slower than Tetrio. TEC is still a relatively fast game. I, I tried it for about two hours because we were playing at our at our university 
Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of my skill also transferred over, but with the zone <laughs> and uh, other rules, it's a bit difficult. I'm sorry. Nice there said good to just clash play. That's so funny. <laughs> Tetris Clash? <laughs> oh, so it was a it was an app a few years ago, um, where you could bet money on Tetris games, and they would have yeah. different formats like score attack and versus and stuff. It was a it was a mobile app. <laughs> That's so oh, cool. yeah, oh, it got, Tetris it, Clash player. Let's go. It got discontinued, but I remember one time I was talking to Night Slayer about it. He said he would just add people that he would lose to as friends. So you can see, you can see when they're online and just dodge them. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, here though, we, we have both picks for the teams. So back to the game, back to the yes. game. We have SMDB as, I believe, a very good PC player. Have you seen them around? Uh, PC isn't like perfect? Yes. Oh. I can I... open Jay's Trist real quick, because I'm pretty sure I've seen SMDBS around. I believe this is a warm-up. So uh, it should be. Seeing some ST stacking. Uh, not seen that strategy in many, many years. SMDBS is currently number 5 on the JSTRIS PC leaderboard with 177 perfect clears consecutively. Goddamn. That's a lot. <laughs> also, I've noticed their PPS is 1.15. That's almost twice as fast as some of the other scores on the leaderboard. So incredible work with the head score there. That's it's incredible. Too smart. So a lot of perfect clears, I'll, I'll say that. In under yeah. half an hour, 177. Yeah, maybe we'll see that double PC strategy you were talking about earlier. <laughs> I'm hoping to see some um, DPC here, actually. Well, I don't usually say I want to see DPC, but... <laughs> yeah. Against Super Shocky, a very good player. This might be quite an upset if SMDBS can pull off some opener game here and steal some rounds off. What yeah. do you mean I know PC? Come on! Give us some openers! <laughs> Give us some openers! He's in- they're in chat! There's no PCs! Come on! Show the PC! <laughs> Do it! <laughs> Where's the PC? That's not- that's a- oh, no. Okay. Oh. it's okay. MPO okay, is base. MPO is Still base. a good opener, but... Super Shocky here, immediately showing off a speed advantage. It's 2.7 PPS? 2.6? Super Shocky's looking so clean already. And then, oh! The, the back to back break is unfortunate. But it looks like SMDBS is immediately off with a speed disadvantage and that does not bode well for the rest of the match where speed matters a lot in tetrio mm. super shocky spiked up oh dropped all the way back to 2 pps i spoke too soon wow. and SMDPS <laughs> takes off the first man takes the first game opener oh oh let's PCO? go let's go let's go PCO? okay pco pco mirror SMDBS finds the second! Super and the third, there's the third, there's the third! Flying in SMDBS's territory. No! Misses the oh, fourth! Oh, just too late. So close. But there's a spike, there's a spike. He's trying to time it. Oh, they're trying to time, okay. wow. Good receive, good receive. And Super Shocky miss drops. Oh, miss drops the spike. Oh, that's rough. SMDBS does not have the kill after that. And now it's up to mid game. Both players had over 100 APM due to the high octane openers, but Ooh. SMDBS takes a 120. Yeah, I think Super Shahi got a little overzealous on his up stack there. SMDBS immediately off 2 0. Oh my, this Good is start. the script. It's the wrong person doing PCO. <laughs> I was not expecting a cedar. <laughs> <laughs> I've but it is looking to be a relatively close game. Super Shocky needs to recover fast though, because it's the scores are tied up for both scores right now. Not to say that um, Cornell has a low chance of winning at the moment, but Super Shocky really needs to pull something off here. Yeah, I believe Cornell will have to win every single 
uh, round from here on to to win this match. Yes. I believe that is the situation we are seeing here. <laughs> Super Shocky is looking clean here, but so is SMDBS looking... The 50 oh, spike. spike! Oh, and unfortunately that would be the set. Um, that that would be the match, but not the set. <laughs> Yeah, Shockey SMTBS... Oh, my bad. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, I think last round they did a really good job of uh, pushing Super Shocky up with pressure and then finally just getting a spike, which... Absolutely. Yeah. I was seeing some great cancelling going... Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Dude, oh that's <laughs> rough. The, the commentator curse. Oh, the commentator curse! Uh, SMTBS, you're doing horrible right now. You will miss drop every single piece. Yeah, you won't find a good down stack. You won't find a down stack here. I uh, hear a little bit of bias. <laughs> trying you to, won't find a down stack. Trying to harness the commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there is no down stack here. There is no way SMDBS finds the multiplier spike here. <laughs> okay, see? Okay, it worked, it worked, it worked. Sorry for the jinx. It, it balances out. <laughs> <laughs> So SMDBS here looking clean, so is Super Shocky. A slight speed advantage coming in from Super Shocky, but not that relevant. And SMDBS is doing a lot of macro play here, looking at Super Shocky's actions and deciding what to do from there. Mm -hmm. Super Shocky with a pretty clean back-to-back -back setup here. Might have to break it. Breaks it, unfortunate. SMDBS looking super clean. Oh, Super Shocky, that's looking rough. Yeah, Super Shocky, or not Super Shocky, SMDBS is going for a lot of just skipping and trying to stay low. Because I think they understand that as a slower player, they have to play reactively instead of going on the offensive. But Super Shocky trying to go on the offensive here, but also not being able to mount the pressure needed to um, top out SMDBS. And wow. SMDBS mounts a 4 0 lead. <laughs> Just playing safe and finding it other ways to get down from any situation. Immediate mm -hmm. misdrop from Super Shocky. Mm -hmm. I think Super Shocky needs to start looking for spikes because SMDBS is doing a really good job of not taking any risks and just staying low to their board as possible. But it also means there that we go. <laughs> like that. <laughs> just found one right there. Yeah. Twelve spike coming in from Super Shocky with a T spin into a T spin plus Tetris. It's a lot of lines. PCO coming <laughs> in. That 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 was not in the script. <laughs> Multiply. Oh. Oh my God! Another. Wow. Man, I thought I thought you said SMDBS is the one that's good at PCs. I. <laughs> SMDBS is the one on the leaderboard with 177 consecutive PCs, man. Are you sure? I think I'm being lied to. I'm being <laughs> gaslit. Amazing opener gaming here from Super Shocky with the double PCO to immediately secure a round. That was that's what I was saying earlier. One PC doesn't kill, the second one is very likely to kill. So if you're doing first, you really should try to go for second. Even you, if you aren't that familiar with it, because if you don't find it, it's pretty easy to clear out from there. Oh, where did that spike come from? I was watching Super Shocky, and then all of a sudden he's at the top. <laughs> SMDBS is just playing so clean here, receiving all the clean garbage that Super Shocky sending, and giving it right back along with their own T-spins. Okay, Super Shocky has a free spike here. SMDBS not finding the second. And that will not Did kill. Oh just... my god! Oh my word. That does not kill, unfortunately. But can SMDBS recover? That, that, that's so clean. Oh, they're, they're out already. Oh, a bit greedy here from Super Shocky. But. Oh, the multiplier, the multiplier! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god. goodness! It's so good! Oh At no. 133 APM here. <laughs> Excellent game from Super Shocky. To cut down the lead a little bit. Oh, PCO? From both. One's MKO, one's actually PCO. <laughs> yeah. Super Shocky going for the Tetris. Well, I don't know if I like that. Good count to four there. To, oh, the, the, keep that back to back. Um, <laughs> immediately breaks it, but. Oh, free spike! Oh. I'm not sure I like these decisions from the Super Shocky. But 
looking clean here from both sides. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's an advantage here. Unless Super Shocky misdrops something here. Nope, not gonna happen from either side, and it will go down to mid game again. Mm -hmm. I think SMDBS is a little bit too eager to skim sometimes. I think they might want to utilize their stack a little bit better some, uh, in some situations. I think in this situation where we have Super Shocky trying to go on the offense, infinite down stacking from SMDBS is the best strategy. Because with mm -hmm. all these offensive plays being made, Super Shocky is much more likely to miss drop. Oh yeah, I mean, I or uh, I meant in certain situations where they're like already very low on the board. They are high up this time and don't yeah, play yeah. Their, at that time. <laughs> but when I was talking earlier. <laughs> At the bottom of your board, it is a pretty bad idea to, um, to skim. Because doing nothing is pretty bad. Here we have oh, the pass the through. These pass oh, players through. high up. Uh, SMDBS finds a way down first. Super Shock Shocky's looking pretty rough here, but there is a combo down stack. Good find into the Teasman, but that's going to just be clean for SMDBS to mount a comeback with the spikes. Oh, the prophecy. Counting to four from Super Shocky. It is just pyramid game at this point. If Super Shocky can make their way down, there is a down stack. Good finds. Good T spin. And should be pretty close to just getting down from here. Oh, misses the down stack. Oh, they went That's for more pieces here. Super Shocky's pretty high up, looking dangerous. And SMDBS does have. Back to back is going with the Tetris well. Mm. Oh, Super Shocky finally finds a pretty big one. But looking rough here, these more eyepieces finds the eyepiece. SMDBS cannot find more attack here. Oh, gives it the campfire. Super Shocky is looking good here. SMDBS has to cancel. Super Shocky is finding the back to backs. And. SMDBS is all the way at the bottom. We have a full reset here back to mid-game again. Yeah. I think at that point, Super Shaggy had a pretty long back-to-back -back chain. I wonder if they could have just continued that as their win condition. Good spike from Super Shaggy, but it's all clean. And again, SMDBS is just going to downstack all the way through that. But Super Shaggy continuing the pressure this time. Looking good, there's some cheese on SMDBS's board. It's going to be rough to get through. And Super Shocky finds another T spin, finds another Tetris, finds the C spin. Let's go, that's my favorite setup Your right there. Favorite. Unfortunately, it is not a faux C spin there. Super Shocky has to skim and break back to back multiple times. We're starting to see the faster your time kick in, but SMDBS does not survive long through it. It's 5v5, it's all tied up! Super Shocky is starting the comeback. It has completed the comeback here. Mm -hmm. Oh, mirror openings. Super Shocky... A bit eager to continue the... Um, SD stacking there, but finds this... 20 spot! Oh, oh, that's beautiful! 131 APM coming in. And that will be match point for Super Shocky, coming back all the way down to three points, I believe, at one point. Starts out with the PC. Cannot find second. Cannot That's find, not the right yeah. Side. Near the second O to go for that one, but it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But oh my god, that is perfect garbage coming in for Super Shocky. Or Tetris is. 2.5 yeah. PPS. It looks like Super Shocky has such an that advantage. Might be it. Yeah. Well, that will be it. Great Tetris stacking there from Super Shocky to continue the pressure and knock out SMDBS in this match here. Yeah, I think they started down four points, right? Like 4 0 and then just brought it back. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, Cornell is out of the match here. But amazing effort here from Super Shocky to take the, the match from SMDBS. And now, um, Cornell will have to send out their next player to face WPI. Yeah, they're gonna definitely need several minutes to decide on who their last player is because they have many choices. 
That was a bit rough here for Super Shocky at the beginning, but they did manage to adapt and come back. What do you think? Yeah, I think Super Shocky was playing too much of a pressure style at the beginning without um, being able to close out the games against the like very down stack heavy style that SMTBS was going for. And I think uh, later in the set, we saw that Super Shocky was building more spikes because of how passive that SMTBS was tending to play. So against players who play very defensively, like SMDBS there, you do need to find a spike. Just peer pressure is going to have a pretty hard time of defeating players like that. Because if you just stay very low and cancel every Tetris, send them right back, there isn't much that can't kill you besides for a 20 spike, which Super Shocky did manage to find multiple times. Yeah. I think that was so the big adjustment that he needed. So yeah, a very good adjustment there from Super Shocky to actually take the set from SMDBS. Right, so we're here at the player selection screen again. Since Cornell did win, they will be sending out... Um... <laughs> um Fizzle, you want to introduce this player? Uh, uh yeah, of course. <laughs> 53W53. You uh, love him. Yeah, you know, okay, who, I, who, household name at this point, really. I, I'm uh, just gonna say W, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but because Cordero's gonna need this W here. <laughs> oh, true. You know what? They're gonna get 53 of them. <laughs> alright, alright. This is 53 dubs now. But that's their official name, 53 dubs. But uh, <laughs> the WPI here will need to send out the player to prevent these 53 dubs. Ahaha. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. That is a stupid joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Laughing. Bro, I got four hours of sleep. I'm kinda high. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Mad B will be coming out here to face 53W. <laughs> yeah, another player I am not very familiar with, but that is seeming to be a trend. So I hope no a one's too surprised. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people coming here out to the Collegiate Tetris League that we've never seen before. Yeah. Super Shocky and SMDBS, some people might be familiar with, but these players, um, at least I'm seeing them for the first time. Ooh, immediate Ocklear coming in from 53. Yeah, it does not Can't... find the second, sadly. Wait, that's. Oh, there's a. Th oh, the so close to the third. Does not happen. Matt is looking decently clean here with the 7-2 um, stack. Has. Oh, I don't like these skins. Panics a little and ends up doing nothing. I wouldn't say e e um, either player has an advantage. Oh my god, I take that back. Where did what a that spy. Come from? There was a lot of clean on Matt's board, and I, I'm guessing it. There, wo there was... Oh, the misdrop for 53. Yeah. Just immediately, out of clean garbage getting sent back to 53's board. <laughs> Just from that warm-up round, I think 53 needs to... Might need to do a little bit of cheese race, not gonna lie. Honestly, why not 5-3? There's fewer syllables. 5-3. 5-3 dubs, 5-3. I think 53 just comes naturally to me, because one of my friends uh, at UMD, his, his tag is 56. <laughs> we can go with 53. Um, in chat, if WPI has 24, don't they win by default? Yes, unfortunately Cornell is already out of this match. They have already lost. But we can still see a good showing from their players here. Let's see what they can do. Don't count them out for the rest of CTL, absolutely not. The skim openers from both against a stick spinner, that would be a very rough way to open up a game, but the near player finds an opener, so it does work out here. Oh my, can you hear him then? I can hear static on your end, I think. Oh no, I think my roommate is playing Overwatch because he is very loud right now. <laughs> <So>. Oh, 
I, I have played a total of three hours of Overwatch throughout one session. I will not touch that game again. It's too much <laughs> going yes. on. Give me Valorant any day. <laughs> Back in the game now. <laughs> well, we are Riot Gaming here. We, we are OSK Gaming. <laughs> Tetris mode coming in from 53. Panics a bit. Cannot continue the back to back back. Oh man, clogs it up a little with the floating eye. It's going to be rough to get, get down from here. These two, these are another eyepiece. These are another eyepiece, and these are another, another eyepiece. It seems to be a bit of a pattern. Lots of triples from Matt B side. Oh, the mistrot from 53 here. That might be it. Yeah, there's. Oh, good spin, but. Matt's looking clean and will find the kill here. Yeah. Okay, so the total points over the entirety of the tournament matter. So even if Cornell has already lost the smash, they can still mount a good start for the rest of their tournament here. Stick spin coming in from 53 here to immediately take the next game though. As I said, Matt doesn't seem to have much in the way of openers, and 53 will take advantage of that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there is no early O here, and no stick spin. Mm -hmm. Oh, nearly PCs, but it's not gonna happen. Yeah, lots of skimming at the bottom from 53. I, I feel like I'm not sure if they're... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not Still sure looking for the PC. For. Yeah. <laughs> it does look like that to me. But here we are, finally into mid-game. Oh, still skimming. I'm not sure I like this, coming in from 53, just skimming in. Oh, and the misdrop. But Matt also not looking very clean. A bit well, spaghetti here. well as well. They do count to four, but immediately begin skimming again and throws away their back-to-back. -back. Both players here seem a bit scared. But playing too scary can give you a disadvantage, as Matt here, just trying to skim the entire game and is getting pressured up slowly but surely. Yeah. Skimming is a good way to default back to a board that you're familiar with, but once you are there, stop skimming because it, it will take you back to something you've never seen before. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the I, other I, issue as well is if you play too passive, even if you're the, your opponent is not that experienced, you're giving them a lot of chances to just get lucky. Oh, absolutely, yes. Tetris does involve some random <laughs> numbers here. There is some RNG. Mm -hmm. So, if you just sit there doing nothing, your opponent may eventually just find a 20 spike. Matt here just playing a bit too passive for my liking, and will lose another round. PCO, both players cannot find it, it's on the wrong side. A lot of skimming in, coming in here again. Oh, 53 still looking for the, the PCO. Oh, wait, there, there is one, there is... Uh, yeah, uh, oh, no. Is there? I, I think there was. I might have seen one there. Oh, oh let's go! go. Oh, there we go! I should have never had it then, you know, with that I crazy thought I saw one. Had. You <laughs> saw it so far in advance, I should have never doubted him. <laughs> <laughs> Matt needs to start sending here. Uh, 53 is just infinite skimming and trying to find a PC and somehow yeah. it actually works out. That should never be a proper <laughs> strategy here. Yeah, I mean that's kind of part of what I said earlier as well, right? Like, that only happened because Matt is giving 53 so much time to get lucky and he really just got extremely lucky. <laughs> Mid-game PCs are lucky, make no mistake. 53 took like the entire game look to look for it. <laughs> Matt here though, bringing it back. 53 with some very rough misdrops at the top of their board. This is... might be perfect player openers from both sides again. 53 is going for it fast. Can't find first, might have second. Oh, Matt... Oh, Matt misses PC, I think. I think there was a TK PC there. Uh, the scores are correct. Um, WPI is already up that much. Uh, I think uh, I think 53 might be on the wrong side of the screen. Are they actually? 
Uh, I believe so. I think 53 is on Cornell's team. There we go. Thank you, Blue. Quick eye press fix to, fixes the problem. So, um, this is just one set out of many sets that will determine the victor between these two teams. Unfortunately, Cornell is missing two players, so WPI is immediately up 14 points. And this is the result of that lead that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Matt, a bit rough, high up misses a down stack, but still able to find a slightly less optimal one. Will get down, I believe. Because 53 is so cheesed up here. Oh, I don't like this board at oh, all. Wow. It will be their demise. Mm. All tied up here. It's a very close game. Oh, that's such a fast PC. There is no PC. In that situation, you do want to skim the eye to look for a PC. Okay, they were on the correct sides. <laughs> I think they got reset after after this war. Yeah. I'm not too familiar with that, so... I am also not, right. but that's just what I saw. <laughs> 53 is mounting decent pressure. Oh, might start looking for a PC again as Matt tries to get to the Tetris well. There it is. Oh, 53! That's rough! That's a rough placement for the T-piece. They're going to need some very specific pieces to get out of this sticky situation. They're so high up. Oh, that's so gross. That is insane. Good on them. Wait, to... there's a spike. There's a spike. There's a spike. There's a spike. Ayo. Oh, can't find the configuration. There's still a spike. Oh my god. Well played from 53. That won't be is that it, it for this that game. Is it. Yeah, see, they got reset again. Ah, I see. <laughs> We will I'm, have to press I. I almost, I almost got gaslit. Look, first he says SMDBS is the PC guy, and now this won't stand okay, for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, oh, we we have a oh, PC wow. guy here though. Look, look at the, the wow, 53 with the PCs this time. <laughs> Out of this world with the, that double PC there, and here we have Ooh, a DT cannon. Oh, fallen out. A fuse recently because look it's so high up 53 does not stack it correctly and yeah. it's looking so rough people have defaulted to other openers just because this can happen with your DT cannon immediate disadvantage just from choosing the improper opener and there mm. we go the punish yeah I definitely DT definitely feels extremely scary uh, on Tetris specifically it's good if you are significantly faster, or if you are just starting out with openers, because it does teach you how to tease spin triple and double. But mm -hmm. other than that, no, I would not use this opener. Yeah. 53, oh, might be a small misdrop there, but... Oh, what what are these fixes? I, I don't like this. 53 is pushed all the way up, might be some tournament nerves kicking in here. And just oh. stacking themselves into oblivion here, giving Matt pretty much a free win. As Matt, that's just enough pressure to tip them out. Alright, more PCs here coming from 53. There is a PC. No second. No second? Yep, no second. Uh, no second. That would have been pretty funny, actually, if they got it off the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's clean here from Matt, though, until these skins. Prior to that. Oh, the misdrop! Wow! Oh. That one L misdrop is going to put 53 on match point. Yeah, 53 had like a perfect garbage well for his Tetris. <laughs> I'm going and for DT again. This time it's fast enough. Oh no! Oh, but is it rotated enough? Oh, the most common DT misdrop. You have to hold down while doing that. Yeah. But when you do to get out pretty, pretty nicely. When you do the T-spin triple for the DT cannon, you the T-piece does have to drop one grid space down. If you do not hold down, that will happen. <laughs> PPT classic. <laughs> Happened yeah. many times. 53 I'm does familiar. clean it out, but immediate disadvantage from the opener. Yeah. Oh, Matt's looking very rough here. He's going to need some very specific pieces here to downstack again. In Tetra, you don't want to be in bad positions in the first place. Matt playing so passively, just 
unfortunately leaves themselves so open to any attack. But here, 53, not as familiar with down stacking as Matt is. And, oh, that's so rough. 53 is on match point. They need to win this here to close it out. But Matt's looking clean. Oh, the cancel. Oh, not with that cancel. Oh, and blocking yeah. their goal as well. This is a very ambitious up stack. 53 was at the top there. If Matt did not cancel the Tetris and sent just one more attack, it would have been match point for both of them. It would be our first tiebreaker so far. That might also just be the round with that JPS. Yeah. Matt's so high up, and 53 has more attacks coming there. That's way. That will be yeah. game. 53 does find it. Final score, 21 to 29. Well played to both though. Find, both did find their way out, but he's out of some very sticky situations there. Some mm -hmm. very rough um, board states at the top of their respective boards. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's definitely a shame, you know, that uh, they had two absences because they won each individual 1v1, but that, that's still not enough. Absolutely. If they did not have those two absences, we would be seeing a very much closer score here, I believe. Yeah, oh sure. wait, 21, 29 to 21, it's actually very close considering WPI started off with the 14 point lead. Unfortunately though, this will be the match for Cornell and WPI comes away with the victory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we're swapping out here? Uh, I believe so. All right, I have not had dinner yet, so I will be heading out, and I, I believe Plu will be taking over. Please, you hear? What's up? I hope you enjoy your dinner, your victuals. Your I went sustenance. to Costco. Hell I, I got yeah. a rotisserie chicken. That's hell that's yeah, stuff. that's what I like. Dude, I'm starving. I'm gonna scarf that rotisserie chicken down so fast. <laughs> growing up is realizing. <laughs> growing up is realizing that chicken is not bad. As a kid, I'm like, man, why eat chicken when I can eat pork or beef? But now I know. <laughs> chicken is good. <laughs> Wrapping this up though, very good showings from both WPI and Cornell. Some breakup performances from players that most of us may have never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Good clashes of styles, good teaspoons, good openers. We see some good performances today. And great job to everyone who participated. And thank you for coming tonight.
Ooh, oh crap, I didn't have my mic on. Hello everyone! <laughs> and welcome back to the Collegiate Tetris League Round 1. I am Clue, I am the Tetris Director at UBC Esports, and I'm also the lead organizer in this event. Uh, Fizzle, you probably already know now, because he introduced himself at the start of the stream. So yeah, hello yeah. Fizzle. Hello. Also, I'm really cool, so if you guys don't yeah. remember my introduction, I'll be really offended. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, very true. I can confirm he is a very cool guy. Well, Thank okay, you. so. We've got a little switch up for the teams now. We have NYU versus UCSB. In other words, New York University versus University of California Santa Barbara. Quite a, quite a mouthful there. So that's why you, we use acronyms on the stream overlays. Mm. I just realized I lied to you, uh, off stream, where I said my what? cousin went here. My cousin went to a different school. I'm stupid. Okay, is, is it another UC? I'd understand yeah. if you get it mixed up. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's fair, that's fair. It was, it was Santa Clara instead of Santa Barbara. Oh, <laughs> wait, Santa oh, wait, no, never mind. Okay, there's, there's actually so many. When I, when they I was like, too. When we had team registration, I was so confused as to why there were so many teams that start with UC, and they're all University of California. Like, there's UCSB, UCSC, which isn't Santa Clara, it's Santa Cruz, UCSD, which is San Diego, and yeah. UCB, which is Berkeley. So there's yeah. four UCs in this tournament. Yeah, although I don't think anyone calls Berkeley UCB. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's just Berkeley. Most people either say Berkeley or Cal, yeah. Do you know Berkeley was the first UC? That's why they call it Cal. Huh. Yeah. Okay, well, let's jump right into the player select here. It actually looks like the players have already started their warm-up, so, uh, that's okay. It's just the warm-up. It's just the warm-up. Can't quite read their names on the background. But oh. Huh? I oh, it's because of the- it's because of the team colors. Okay, you know what? Let's just yeah. make them white. Bad contrast. There we go. Visible now. Yes. I- I've heard of Sagittarius, of course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Sagittarius. Um, and then the other ones, I'm a little bit lost. I'm not gonna lie. It's okay, tough. Let's see. There's <laughs> intermittents. I know intermittents used to be quite active in Orz's server. Um, oh, the Betris. Yeah, yeah Betris server. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've kind of forgot that existed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I like the I like the art channel there. That's about it. <laughs> Let's see, we have Breakfast versus Sura Sony. Breakfast versus Sura Sony. And since they've just finished the warm up, we will get straight into the first to seven when they are ready. Do you eat breakfast, Blue? I do eat breakfast. I do eat breakfast, yes. Mm. I think breakfast is very important. Do you very eat nice. breakfast? Mm, not most of the time. <laughs> not most of the time. I started, I started last semester, but it's been very on and off. Anyways, getting into the match. <laughs> getting into the match. Breakfast starts off with the DT cannon. And okay, it looks like they're swapped again, so I need to do oh. the manual swap every time. Oh no. Yeah, we have DT Cannon and PCO as the openers. Yeah, Sir Sony pretty quickly taking out breakfast here. This time, both players starting off with a TKI, but Breakfast uses his T uh, T piece as part of the stack, which is 
uh, generally not ideal. Also, Breakfast not using instant soft drop, I'm noticing. That is insane. Oh, yeah, it's... Huh, that is a pretty I... slow soft drop. It looks like it's yeah. the default. It's the default soft drop speed, which is... I don't know. Compared to instant soft drop, which is what I'm used to, it's very yeah. useful. Yeah, that looks like worse than PPT speed almost. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, I think at that slow of a setting, it's actually a genuine disadvantage. Mm. And we can kind of see it because Breakfast is playing half of s half at half the speed as uh, Sarasoni is. 1.2 PPS, while their opponent is at 2.4. But they are holding on here. We're at the one minute mark now, and Breakfast is doing mm -hmm. quite a good job at surviving with this huge speed difference. Yeah. You see that um, Sarasoni is getting a lot of holes in their stack, so they're even though they're playing fast, they're not giving themselves a good opportunity to actually take advantage of their adva speed advantage. Yeah, absolutely. And in the chat, someone says, to be fair, Sarasoni is Strider. It's definitely showing that. <laughs> definitely is. Strider or not, though, they are... Oh, I was about to say they had the advantage here, but Breakfast, just opening up their well, has a really big opportunity here with two eyepieces. Oh my god, that's gonna be... Oh my... That is over a full PPS of speed disadvantage and still manages to call, call that win. Mm -hmm. Definitely extremely rare in Tetrio, I feel like. Oh my god, this soft drop honestly hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> or I think, at least then, if you're not in the highest levels of play, you can definitely uh get away with having a slow speed a lot of times like it's not that big of a deal uh, unless you're at uh, like really high levels of play like for example cz or uh, maybe i shouldn't use cz as an example that's but... a little too high level <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay cz can cz can play at like half half your speed and still win consistently but then again, it's easy is easy, so maybe I shouldn't use yeah. that as an example. My bad, my bad. We had the double DT there, but it looks like Surasoni misdropped it a little bit. Breakfast up stacking really high here. Yeah, I think generally DT cannon, you're already stacking up so high that you don't want to continue your up stack and be greedy. I think you just need to resolve it uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, I definitely agree, and as a result of all of that upstacking, up it looks like Breakfast received a lot of cheesy garbage, which isn't really ideal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that huge speed disadvantage, when you do tank all that cheese, like, it's just a really big uphill battle, in my opinion. Like, even though Surasoni, you know, isn't the most efficient, if you let them run away with their speed, um, then you're kind of just letting them do what they want. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of doomed there. Double eyepiece wasted by breakfast might be a little bit risky if Surasoni can get some attack out. Yeah, wastes another one, but now has two eye dependencies. Or, I guess they would have had two if they... Uh, didn't want to create a hole in their stack. <laughs> mm. Is this a... I think it was supposed to be a PCO. <laughs> From Surasoni. Uh -huh. I'm not quite sure what breakfast was going for there. But... It looked to me like they wanted to make a DT base and then misdrop their oh, P. maybe? Nevertheless... They have quite the clean 9-0 stack now. Going for the double mm -hmm. Tetris. So I think Surasuni also... To get out here. Mm. 
I think Sir Sony also cancelled the garbage from breakfast in a way that gave them a little bit messier than they might have liked. Yeah, Sir Sony is really just kind of kicking themselves in the foot because, or er, <laughs> kicking them, shooting themselves in the foot because. <laughs> You know, as a faster player, you have the opportunity to be the aggressor in most situations. Yeah. But when you start covering your holes this way, you end up, you know, you use a lot of your speed to just keep down stacking without even receiving garbage, right? Like, yeah, and the interesting thing is adding. that Breakfast, mm -hmm. although playing, again, significantly slower, actually has higher APM right now than Surasoni. So yeah, it's <laughs> It might benefit Sirisoni a little bit to slow down and kind of make better decisions instead of going as fast as they can. Mm -hmm. They have uh, very similar stats that you used to have. <laughs> I'm <guessing>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. My stats used to be exactly like Sirisoni's on Gestress, maybe even a little bit lower. Two PPS. <laughs> 50 APM. Yeah, th okay, that was higher than my stats before. My stats were like 30 <laughs> APM. I, I was doing my best, but I think... I, I Actually, I don't remember what was wrong with me. I just... Sounds like your best could have been a little better. Bruh. But that's okay! That's okay! That's why we learn! That's true, that's true. That's why we, we learn. You know, the interesting thing is that... The person who got me out of that 2 PPS 30 APM phase was none other than Ben XT, who was here commentating just a moment ago. And actually, Ben XT is offering coaching for anyone who donates $15 or more to the prize pool. If you want to donate to the prize pool, you can type exclamation mark CTL prize pool in the chat. Anyways, back to the game. <laughs> Back to the game, back to the game. I also just realized that the score is now 6-1 to one already. Uh, oh. Which is, I guess, not surprising with the... Um, the speed difference. With the speed difference, yeah. yeah. Another, well, one interesting thing about having a slower soft drop speed that's not instant is that uh, if Breakfast wants to take advantage of it, they can use that extra delay to screen watch and oh, okay. time their attacks. Because, you know, in Tetrio, if you have everything instant, it's easier to uh, autopilot, in my opinion. Uh -huh. And because a lot of players in PBT, what they do is during their soft drop time, they'll use that to take an opportunity to peek at their opponent's board. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. You're originally a PBT player instead of Tetrio. Yes. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, it didn't seem like that soft drop speed screen watching thing. But if yeah, we I mean, at, in this match, Sony winning seven to one against Breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at that extent, it's a little excessive. <laughs> mm. But the idea could be there if they, because like there is an argument to be made for not instant soft drop. I think. Yeah, there's a lot of top players who, or maybe not a lot, but there's a couple who don't use instant soft drop. Like, Kazu, I think? Kazu doesn't? Uh, that would make sense. He comes from yeah. PPT as he well. He comes from PPT. <laughs> and yeah, they, they seem to be doing fine without instant mm -hmm. soft drop. Mm -hmm. I personally prefer instant when I have the option, just because it removes, like, one variable. I don't have mm. to I don't have to think about how long I need a soft yeah. drop, I can just tap down and it's there, you know? And I think that helps with, like, misdrop consistency. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Whenever I play games that don't have instant soft drop, I... I misdrop so much. It's... Like, PPT, I can't really... I, I think I'm just way too used to instant draw soft drop. Like, I can't really gauge when, when to spin my TPs and then I just misdrop. So sad. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely a learning curve to it if you're not used to it. So, I understand that it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, for the last match, I think 
uh, for Sir Sony, one thing they definitely want to look at is uh, slowing down and, you know, because I noticed they're either misdropping a lot or kind of covering their own garbage over and over. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you just slow down a little bit, it gives, you less, gives yourself a little extra time to see, like, a slightly better option that keeps you from, you know, like, gimping yourself. Because he really had a huge, or they had a really huge speed advantage, but weren't taking advantage of it because they had to deal with their own stack that they were yeah, yeah, definitely. messing up for themselves. Especially in... In Tetris, the basics are really, really important. So, like, mm -hmm. if you have the option of going fast, but, you know, keeping a messy board or going slow but keeping a clean board, you always, always want to keep the clean board. Yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like both teams have already chosen their players. Uh, the oh, two-minute yeah. and three-minute decision timer things haven't really been used since they seem to <laughs> know very well who they want to send out. So let's see. Pote versus Tortle. And finally, they are on the right side. So I don't have to keep yeah, clicking yeah, yeah, the arrow yeah. button. This is the warm-up, right? Yep, this is the warm-up. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of either of these players? Um, I don't think so, actually. More new players. <laughs> Woohoo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I do like Pote's profile picture, though. The duck. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that from the Goose Game? Untitled Yeah, Untitled, game? Untitled Goose Game. Yeah, yeah it's not a duck. It's, I'm... it's a goose. It's, I, I was having a moment. It's okay. We goose. all have I, a moment. Goose, 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 goose. <laughs> I cor I'm correcting myself. Go, calm down. God damn. Very nice warm up. <laughs> Yeah, just judging from the warm-up round, I, I would imagine these players are around SS. Uh, I'm not super familiar with Tetrio ranks, but that would that would be my guess. You are know. very correct. Tortle is SS and Pote is S+. Plus. Ooh, I'm so smart. So smart, so smart. Yo, I'm, oh, I'm kind of good at this game. All right, now they're Not starting the dogs. real match. First two seven. What is what the is opener? that opener? Oh, that, that is someone's gonna have I to think so of a confused. new bird. Someone needs to think of a new bird right now. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> true, true, what? true. The bird openers. We've got yeah. albatross, hummingbird. Uh. Do you know why they're all named after birds? Because they're floating, right? Yeah, because they're floating, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> it took me a long time to realize that, but we got a 16 coming in from, from Total side. SDPC? I... PC? No PC. So sad. I expect to see, honestly, a lot of... Um, I expect to see a lot of stick spin this event as a whole yeah uh, you know it's it's tetrio is one obviously but mm. another factor is uh like you have to consider that there's going to be a lot of people's first event and it's a format where every single point will count for something mm. so you'll see newer players wanting to steal rounds off of potentially better players and you know i think uh, like openers like stick spin are like the perfect tool for that kind of thing. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's like I remember seeing a tweet from Zynix actually, and it said something like, "Kabuzold, please teach me stick spin for CTL." Oh, I think I saw that too. On yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. But yeah, I mean, that's just, it's, you know... It's, it's a fair... It's a fair thing, like... Yeah. It'll probably work in this format to just open our game, get one point. Yeah. But Pote has a really nice well, but... Uh, had an opportunity to make a cut copy, but opted not to go for it. Uh, and gets a very small multiplier into the Tetris. Port, on the other hand, keeping back to back very well. Right as I say that, though, they broke it, which is understandable because there's a lot of garbage on their board now. 
Yeah, they. I think they got a little bit greedy with that T spin. Um, they didn't have an opportunity to fill the side and create eye dependency right as their hole opened up. But okay, I guess hold on, hold on. Much. Apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently we have a make commentators stop talking redeem. And oh. Moose just redeemed it. Oh. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing. Oh, because this is the UPC Yeah, this is the channel. UPC one. Oh, I didn't my. check them. But anyways, oh let's let's mute for this one round, I guess. Okay. Round wow, over. Thank you for points. the redeem, Moose, I guess. <laughs> 78 points is a lot of points. Well, anyways, back to the game. We have a misdrop PCO from Poth and a non misdrop PCO from Tortle. Fortunately, Tortle did not actually get the PC. I think Tortle wanted to go for a second one, but mm. didn't see it and just gave up. <laughs> yeah. Wait, did I just click? Oh, I clicked 78. My bad. Okay, there. Got some solid 9-0 stacking from Pote. Creates an eye dependency though, which is definitely not what you want on 9-0, especially if you haven't filled up 4 yet, which yeah. they did not. They should be able to get out of this though, and after they do, they've got another really clean well on the left. Two eye pieces as well. It's going to be quite a bit of garbage, but most of it, uh, it's not enough to kill. Mm. And then Mist drops an eye. I don't know if they are. That is a two wide. I don't know if that is intentional. And let's see if I they know the two wide strat. Do they? They do not. So sad. Not quite, but get a pretty decent combo still. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was a strategy after all, actually. Maybe they wanted to send some cheese. Who knows? <laughs> it is a fair strategy. I think both players are probably not fast enough to send, you know, meaningful spikes to each other uh, without getting lucky garbage. So I think for both players, their main goal is to just kind of wait wait around until they just stumble upon some garbage that is very nice to them. Yeah, or they wait around for their opponent to misdrop, and that's exactly what happened with Pote there, unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. PCO, PCO? What on earth is that? Is that the same opener? It's, it's the same opener, but they misdropped. I still have I've no idea what that is. I've never seen that before. They, they must have made one up. Maybe, maybe. You know, when I... In my earlier years, I tried to make an opener. It was not okay. amazing. It was it was something, but I don't think it was very viable. Aww. You know, I guess... There was some pretty cool follow-ups, though. I feel like <laughs> all of the openers that are good have already been found. Like, unless you... Do some adaptations of other openers. It's really, really hard to find something that's not like TKI, but slightly worse. Or yeah, a lot of a lot of first worse. bags. Yeah. But hey, I gotta put my name on it. <laughs> true. Wait, that's so true. Wait, what was it called? What was it called? Is it on the hard drop I, wiki? Ah, uh, we never made a wiki page for it. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that on Tortle's side? I was watching Poe. What happened on Tortle's side? Tortle did PCO, didn't have the right piece, and then started flailing their Z pieces violently. <laughs> uh, I could feel Canadians their frustration. Say Zed. Forgot Canadians say Z. <laughs> what? Okay. All right. Yes, I'm Canadian. Okay. We do say Z.
surprised that the score is so lopsided because I feel like their stats are not that are not that different uh, in stark contrast to the last round. <laughs> yeah. Turtles going Put for just... a really big opener here. The DT continuing with the back to back and into the oh, all clear. Looping DT getting another play. one. Another one. Oh my god. What in the world? That is some impressive some, DT gameplay. These are some PPT strats I'm seeing. <laughs> Six to two now. Tord only needs to win one more. To... Oh, now Pote responding with their own DT. Okay, okay. But not stacking the PC variant. Oh, oh, and Total God, finds the, another oh, DT PC. Wow, they have the setups. Incredible was... opener gaming by Tortal. Sheesh. Sheesh indeed. Now we've got UCSB winning the second match, so they will have the first pick in the third match. Third set. I keep mixing those words up. In the in third set, they will have the first pick. Mm. Actually, DPC, DC, words, DTPC yes. is um, another example, I would say, of like stealing rounds because, you know, it's not the most effective tactic uh -huh. uh, available to you um, as like a low level player. But if you're playing another, well, I guess I shouldn't say low level player, like, but not top level, you know, like not X rank or whatever. Like if you try that in X rank, you you just lose, right? Yeah. But when you have these opportunities to play against, uh, like lower rated players, you can kind of get away with that type of thing, and they don't necessarily have a counter. Yeah. And if you have this, if you have a plan to send a ton of garbage, then they, and they don't have a plan to deal with that, then you just automatically have an upper hand. Mm. Openers, they're, I think, at, uh, not X or U rank levels. There's a lot of people who just don't understand how to deal with them. So any kind yeah. of opener, like even any kind of looping opener, like BT Cannon is a looping opener. I think if you were to do that at like SS or S plus, you could probably win a lot of games as long as you do it fast mm -hmm. and you know uh, the follow-ups and whatever. Yeah. And actually, that's another example, or not example, another advantage to, like, having that opener-centric style of play at that level is that you just need to memorize a bunch of stuff and you don't even really need to think, right? Yeah. A lot of the a lot of the speed at low level comes from, uh, like, hesitations and thinking about where to place things. Like, you, like usually their fingers are fast enough, right? Mm -hmm. But so like as long as they know where to put it without having to think, then they can artificially increase their pieces per second by a ton. Okay, it looks like UCSB has made their choice. They're putting up Undying Fire, a U rank. It might be the first U rank in this match so far. Let's see uh, what NYU has to say to this pick. I believe NYU's highest rated player is Sagittarius, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do right. they have anyone else in in U or above? Do they have anyone else in U or above? Let's see. Um. Yes, they have one U rank, Grippa. Oh. That's number oh. six, seven, eight in the world. Oh, I actually played... Did I play against them? I think I played against them in that big lobby we had uh, oh, last week. Oh, okay. And actually, I speaking believe... of Grippa, Grippa will be going up against Undying Fire. Yeah, that was uh, actually why I asked if they had another U rank player. Oh, huh. Yeah, and I, I guess like, that makes sense. They want to match yeah. it so that they get a close match. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see if they want a warm up. Yes, of course they do. Let's see the warm up. I wonder if there is someone that 
they're saving Sagittarius for on the UCSB team? Oh yeah, that's a good question. I do know that there is at least one X rank on the UCSB team, and that is Intermittent. Oh. But I don't uh, know if that they have other ones. Be who. That's probably who they're saving him for. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, because one thing I think is interesting about this format is that even your best player will only earn you seven points at maximum. Yeah. So you have to think about like how you want to utilize your players to max out your like I don't know like score efficiency question <laughs> mark. Like, there's no point in uh, there's no point in having Sagittarius just blow out like a. A rank player, for example. Mm. Like, if you were to have a number 10 in the world player, you'd probably want that person to beat the best player in your opponent's team. Mm -hmm. And your opponent would want, if they had no one else who is close to number 10 in the world, they'd probably want someone who is not their best player to go against them. So, this. Yeah. Uh, this counterpicking thing where, like, Whoever sends their player first has a little disadvantage. It's kind of prominent here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, the, the warm-up has finished and it looks like they are ready to do the first 2-7. Hopefully they're on the correct side this time. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Let's see. Unfortunately, they are not. But, you know, oh, nothing, no. nothing we can't deal with. Let's press the arrow button. Shush. Damn, she's good at that. Yeah, I'm, that I'm so button. good at I'm so good at this production thing. I'm a pro. No, just, I'm talking. No, just the button pressing is crazy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Gripple off with a bit of a hairy situation, but they do get two Tetrises, but receive quite a bit still, so they don't get down so much as they do just survive and get by. Undying Fire with their own little spike. There's a lot of garbage being sent back and forth. Oh my god, what a on return. Both sides. That was a really nice counter spike from Grippa. They kind of, they weren't down, but they definitely had a stabilized board and they kind of just saw an opportunity and took it. Yeah. Fortunately, it looks like both players missed up their opener. What Undying Fire is doing these? a little bit worse than Grippa though. Grippa has adapted to this LST stacking. Hmm. Oops. Cripple with another misdrop though, as soon as they're out of the woods. Ooh. Bit of a tough start for Undying Fire. We've got the classic Undying stick fire. spin, as Fizzle predicted. Oh, more misdrops, so unfortunately. Grippo with MKO, which is always something I like to see. And Gripper with the cut copy off the garbage, but Miss drops immediately after and doesn't get to take it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there might be a little bit of nerves playing in here. We have that our is first some big extremely spike cheesy the, garbage. In the game from Undying Fire, but Grippa seems to be dealing very well with it. Yeah, right after the spike got sent, they managed to get through all that cheese and just dig through the clean. And there's there's a lot of cleanup play here, so I think I think we'll be seeing a pretty volatile game this uh, this round. Mm -hmm. Oh, this Mr. might be from Grippa and Undying Fire continuing with the pressure. That Grippa might have honestly decided the round, but... Oh, that definitely... <laughs> yeah, that was definitely Covering. unfortunate on Grippa's side, but Undying Fire gets to take their first point in this game. Did you uh, switch the switch sides? Or... Not again, oh, yes. not again. All good. I'm dying fire with a lot of mist drops. I wonder if they are. I wonder. I kind of wonder if they've ever entered a tournament or anything, because I would not expect 
uh, a U rank to misdrop this much. I wonder if they're just not used to playing with stakes. Yeah. That isn't just TR. <laughs> I'm dying fire with the stick spin into Tetris. Grippo's doing very well to defend against it though, and seems pretty healthy on their board. Another misdrop from Undying Fire! And both of them are in a relatively neutral position again. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, I think Undying Fire is just really kind of causing their own doom in a lot of these rounds. Yeah. Might benefit them to go a little bit more slowly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think what you need to, like, if you're misdropping a lot, you need to kind of recognize that it's becoming a problem and you need to adjust your play to yeah. the problems. Okay, Ooh. that's another very unfortunate pair of misdrops from Undying Fire. Yeah. Grip, on the other hand, very, very clean board. Continuously sending out back to back pressure. Goes for the T spin single and then breaks their back to back. I, I think generally, uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I would, I would have to agree. Yes. If you have a big back to back chain and your opponent is not in the best position, it's probably best to not break the back to back chain. Mm hmm. I think that's one, or like, I think generally pressure is a pretty difficult win condition to play around in Tetrio, just because of like how volatile it is and how quickly the game state can change. Um, but if you have that upper hand already, I think trying to go for it is yeah, like certainly viable if you have the vision for it. Yeah, Undying Fire didn't misdrop their Stixman this time and is waiting for the clean garbage. Getting a 16 spike against Grippa. Oh my. Very nice opener gaming. All clear from Grippa. And goes for the second one but misdrops it and uh, does not get it. They have a really nice opportunity to go for back-to-backs here. Breaks their back-to-back -back for a combo, uh, which almost kills, but not quite. If they send just a little more here, oh, yeah. Yeah. Undying Fire was kind of struggling to downstack there. Yeah. Grippa was also kind of struggling to stop skimming for a second there. I was afraid they were going to let Undying Fire out, mm. but did manage to close it. Both players successfully get into mid game without misdropping their opener. Ooh, but misdrops that T spin. Every single time I, s I compliment an, a, a player for not misdropping, they misdrop. My bad, my bad. They have it on and just want to prove you wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I think Grippa is very willing to skim, which, you know, it's not always bad in a fast game where you're kind of always in a little bit of danger, but I, I think they need to uh, slow, maybe not slow down a little bit, but just, you know, think about what their skimming accomplishes yeah. some of the time. There's a lot I think of they times... end up giving a lot of offense. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. There's a lot of times where I feel like their board state is really good, but they end up skimming. Mm -hmm. but... It didn't seem to matter too hey. much here since they won 7-2-2. Yes. Very dominant, and I think that puts the score to, I believe, 10 to 16, which is, you know, fairly close. Yes, I will change the score now. 10 to 16. And what you getting their first victory here, so they will now be the first, I mean, they will now be the team that picks their player first. I don't know if the players are listening, so I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but... 
What? I'm gonna say it anyway. I think it is very unlikely that they put Sagittarius in. Mm. Um, because otherwise they'll just get counterpicked. Yeah, I agree. And, I agree. Yeah. Although, I mean, I guess it would depend on the skill difference between Sagittarius and Intermittence, right? Because if NYU is confident that um, Sagittarius would be able to win, then they don't really have like anything to be concerned about mm. in terms of like losing but also if it's like big enough to the point where he would sweep them anyway then it kind of doesn't matter yeah it kind of doesn't matter and or like it doesn't matter from a score perspective and they would want uh intermittence to be able to take as few rounds as possible yeah right so yeah, interesting, interestingly enough, the moment you said, I don't know if they're listening, we see in the chat, Intermittent says, we are listening, always. Oh, oh, hello, yes, hello, I, you didn't hear any of that, I, what? I, you know what, I think they're definitely going to put Sagittarius in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I totally agree, you, you should probably disregard <laughs> what we said in the last two minutes. <laughs> Okay, it looks like both teams have already made their picks. That was very fast. Is Fizzle right or is Fizzle wrong? Drum roll, please. I was right. He was wrong. <laughs> Damn, he's We were dead. actually trying to intentionally mislead you all so you make a different decision. Let's see if they want to warm up. Sofa versus Intermittence. Oh, actually, a little I... bit of background on these mm -hmm. players. Intermittence is an X rank, number 174 in the world. And Sofa oh. is an S rank, number 9066 in the world. Oh boy. This is going to be a tough one. Oh, they Sofa was a sub in, right? Sorry? Oh, Sofa was a sub in, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sofa was a sub in. Yeah. I wonder if we're going to see any, like, round stealing that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, like maybe stealing. Sofa's gonna pull out like a 5 PPS SDPC. I would sure like to see that. Oh yeah, I'm down. I'm trying to see that. <laughs> oh, they're on the wrong side. So sad. Oh no. Is that Hachi spin? Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, it's your favorite. Oh my god, what a great day! I'm your biggest fan, Sofa. Hachi Spin is to TST? Oh my god. Oh my damn. This is cute. exceptional. <laughs> ben got his C spin. You Aww. got your you got your Hachi Spin. What do you Everyone's got? happy. I got I you know what I just like TKI. I you don't got know the why. fizzle opener. Wait, that's so true. You got the fizzle opener. Oh, I thought I do, but no one knows what it is except for Amy. Oh, man, you should show it off in tournaments more. Oh no, I don't enter tournaments anymore, brother. He's retired. I am retired. That's fair. Was that was that an SD stack? It did look like it on Intermittence's <laughs> side. There has been a surprising amount of ST stacking in this tournament, actually. By surprising amount, I mean there's been more than zero people who have been ST stacking because I don't see it often at all. Yeah, it's definitely... To me, it kind of feels like a relic of the past. It mm. used to be primarily an ultra strategy or a Tetris battle strategy where you go for KOs. Um, like, you don't die after a single top out. But even as an ultra strategy, I feel like... LST took over. Yeah. Mm hmm A few misdrops on intermittent side, but you know, showing their X rank prowess, they're very capable of getting out of it. Misdropping the C spin. But able to get it off anyways with their huge speed advantage. Actually I feel like at least for the previous round, Sofa is not playing too much slower. It's just that I think their solutions to board states were not as good. Because mm. I believe that the uh, before they started like hesitating at the top, they were playing around like 1.8 PPS, I believe. Oh, okay. Ooh. 
Intermittings is going for the classic back-to-back -back chaining. It seems to be going very well for them. Mm -hmm. I think Sofa Chen is just struggling to find paths downward. <laughs> yes, down stacking is... is indeed hard. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Has an extremely clean well, but gives it up for some smaller clears, which I'm not sure if I agree with. Yeah, I also don't agree with it, but it's also understandable since if I yeah, were S-rank going against an X-rank, I'd be scared out of my mind. I'd be pretty scared, yeah. I'm not sure what I'm looking at now. <laughs> 9-0 stacking from Sofa X10. Yeah. Yes, the classic. Hell yeah. Fortunately, not enough. Intermittence not is taking enough. off their, their training weights. Going 2.6 PPS now. And we are at the uh, match. Oh point. my, a DT cannon again. An X ranker using DT cannon is certainly a rare species. <laughs> <laughs> Gets a 16 spike right off the bat. Although all the cheese is at the bottom of the board, so it's actually not going to be a problem. And Sofa Chen could. For Sofa though. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, just not fast enough. This was unfortunately the ex expected outcome though, since they have like a rank difference of five. S S yeah. S plus S S U X. Oh, I forgot there's S+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, S+, plus does exist. I, dude, I don't... Look, I don't... I don't okay, yeah, know that's right. You don't, you don't, don't laugh at me. Bad, don't bad, laugh bad. at me. Come on. No. <laughs> I'm, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I forgot S+, plus was a thing. Dang. There's a lot of ranks in this game. Honestly, Sofa did really well, though. Um... Mm -hmm. Defending and surviving. There are a lot of pretty good decisions from Sofa's side. And I feel like yeah. if I were if I were in Sofa's position, I'd be misdropping every other piece. Oh yeah. 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 Very well played by Sofa. Yeah, the you know, the thing where they give up their really nice Tetris spell that you know it's obviously not optimal, but it's also extremely like a very natural response when you're just like, oh my god, there's so much garbage, what do yeah. I do? Just bring it, get down. You know, the first time I played in a bracket, my... I was so nervous that my whole arm, both arms actually, were shaking. I couldn't <laughs> hit the keys properly. Dang. And I... It was in... On Tetris Friends, and at that time, we... They had a mercy rule. Okay. Where it's first, it's first to 15... But if you get to 10-0, the, the set is over. Oh! And I, huh. I, I stole one round at 8-0. Oh my so gosh, no let's mercy go, rule. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know. To be able to play against an X-Rank as an S-Player uh, like that is definitely, definitely not easy. And, you know, I think they, they, they shouldn't feel too bad about themselves. Mm -hmm. Looks like UCSB has made their first choice. They have Broden and NYU. We are aiding, waiting on NYU to make their choice now. Their only choice. <laughs> oh, actually, Broden is also an X rank. I did not know this. Oh, the they have two X ranks, so that is definitely, definitely, definitely one of the stronger teams we've seen so yes, far. Yes. Yes. Uh. I believe NYU is seed, like seed eight or something. I believe NYU or seed ten. I don't, I don't remember know, exactly. Sure. They are seed fourteen. Okay, so even lower. Oh, you actually, that was probably eight. my bad because I made a seeding mistake at the beginning. But yeah, they are seed fourteen now. Yeah. Anyways, yes, it looks like NYU has declared that Sagittarius A will be playing. You know, just kind of, kind of something I remembered was that NYU actually used to have somewhat of a Tetris scene. I don't know how good they were, but 
I do remember at one point they streamed some like Tetris tournament that they held. Oh Just yeah, like, actually, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. It's very nice to see universities doing or university esports clubs having Tetris related streams or communities. Yeah. I think they only ever did one though. Mm. By the way, you know what other university has a Tetris community? <laughs> That's right, UBC, University of British Columbia. If you happen to go to UBC, did you know we have weekly Tetris in-houses on Thursday at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the UBC Gaming Lounge? So if you're watching this stream and you go to UBC and you're also a Tetris player, be sure to come swing by. That was a crazy segue. Thank you, thank you. You're, you're too smooth with it. <laughs> I can't. I'm not on that level yet. <laughs> you're still doing great. You're doing phenomenally. Doing my best. This is a very long warm up. It is. Both also, they are... Oh yeah, continue? Yeah, I'm also on the wrong side again. <laughs> oh no! Crying. It's okay, it's only the warm-up. Yeah. But yeah, as I was saying, both players are really, really close to... Close on skill level. Both mm -hmm. mid-X rank. You're just trying to give each other RSI before the actual <laughs> game starts. <laughs> That's the strat, that's the strat. Yeah. That's how, that's how you win. You gotta, you gotta think about the game outside the game, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> Looks like Broden was the first to make a mistake with that little SP smith drop on the right. Will they get out of it? Yes, they do! And this two-minute warm-up continues! That's crazy. Alright. Alright. There we All right. go. Now for the real game. Yeah, so NYU already uh, is out of winning the round, but they can still try to get as close of a score as they can mm -hmm. for tiebreakers later. Um, but, you know, they the seed difference is pretty big, so I think it's still you know pretty impressive that it was this close. Um, okay, it looks like in the in the Tetrio chat, we have the NYU team captain asking for three minutes for them to set up their stream because it looks like they're streaming this on their own Twitch Twitch channel. Mm. Why not? We are um, we're predicted to end before wait what? We're going to end before a predicted time anyway, so I think it's fine to wait three minutes. What do you think? Talking is hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. I... This is the last match. This is the suspense building part. Who will win? Sagittarius A or Broden? Do you know anything oh. about this Broden person? I do not. <laughs> You're asking the wrong person for oh, Tetra people. I'm not I, I have not heard about them. Oh, but... holy crap! Wait, wait, wait. Okay. In the Tetrio chat, we see Best Donkey saying, Let's go top 8 CTWC 2022 player Broden Damp. Oh, wow. I did not They're know that. Player. Thank you for telling us this. That is really interesting. No, no. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like classic Tetris and modern Tetris do not have very much crossover at all. Because the skills are just entirely different. <laughs> okay, what is going on in here? We have 
a copy pasta in the Twitch chat. You say pasta like a Canadian as well. What? How, okay, how else are you supposed to pronounce that word? Pasta. Pasta? Wait, what did I say then? You said pasta. Copy pasta. Copy. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right okay. <laughs> I'm gonna. Right, I should I not. Don't, I don't care. Anyway, uh, yeah, what is this copy pasta? You're saying <laughs> Sagittarius A. You are not like the others. You are the poggy woggy. <laughs> Will this copy pasta be enough to usher Sagittarius to victory? Sagittarius did win the warm up, you know. <laughs> that, is that, is, that is very important. Very omen. Yes. So it's been a while since I've seen Sagittarius play. Because uh, I don't think. Or, I think they used to play PPT as well, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh, I believe so. I think I used to run into them on, on Puzzle League. Oh. I... I know Sagittarius from MMC. That's the only mm. reason why I know them. Because... I think the first time I met them was in Modest Tomatoes uh, Gang Wars tournaments in MMC. Where they uh. had... It was kind of like this tournament, actually. They had one player of each skill level, blue, red, green, yellow, and orange. And Sagittarius was green back then, so that's 30 to 60 APM. Oh, wow. They really leveled up then. Yeah, X rank now. Is he, is he red or is he orange? Orange. Ah. Might be able to make red if they tried, but I'm not sure. Mm, I see. Yeah, I just remember Sagittarius as like, there's this one guy on Puzzle League that has an underscore, and their <laughs> name is like, vaguely palindromic, but not really, and I too, I'm too lazy to actually figure out how to read it. Because they, they, they had a, they had a underscore between the two T's, I believe. Oh. And I was like, I, I cannot read this, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was too difficult. Looks like there's some people. Um, wait, I'm on the right. Oh yeah, hold on. I'm on the scene that doesn't show the score. So let's show the score. It's 10 to 23 for NYU. So yeah, although uh, they won't be able to win this whole match, even with a sweep. It's still a good chance for them to get some points. And also, I mean, two X rank players playing, you know what I'm saying? True! So, always a nice show. Oh, okay. It looks like they are where the stream is ready. They're trying to, they're trying to take our market share on the ctl viewership base i i don't really care personally i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> you will crush them like the ruthless businessmen we are Are they are they good or are they good? Yes they are. They are ready. And now the game starts. Okay, okay. Delay over. Minus six cents from stolen ad revenue. <laughs> no. Our money. <laughs> LST from Sagittarius. I love TKI. They're both playing at three PPS. Wow. Quite a oh, yeah. large skill difference from all of the other games we've seen today. Yeah. You know, it's hard to find people in real life with such short notice, so... Mm. Being able to find two X ranks is insane, though. Yeah. If they didn't already know about each other, I'm very impressed. 
Actually, in general, I'm also very uh, impressed at uh, Sagittarius, because I know Sagittarius has been looking for, or very dil diligently looking for players for a really long time, and they managed to mm. get over 10 players on their team. Well, not really mm. on their team, but in the server. So yeah, very good job to Sagittarius for being able yeah. to recruit so many people. Spreading yeah. the Tetris love, as they say. I will take partial credit for giving them a line of content. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if how useful it ended up being. <laughs> I ended up having to use their eyepiece, but wow, it gets just two more for, for fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Broden into that very clean C-spin transition! What the heck? Oh, wow. Ben would have loved to see that. Yeah. Sagittarius just wasn't able to get down all game. Broden was putting on a little too much pressure. And Sagittarius was having trouble finding down stack solutions. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, they were kind of just getting a tough draw on their pieces, to be honest. Not this time, though! That was a really big spike from Sagittarius. Broden returning yeah. it all back though, and Sagittarius with a little misdrop on their side. Yeah, do you manage to open their board up back up, but not with the counter spike, they just kind of managed to get down. Yeah, and it looks like in X rank fashion, both players are. Completely fine now. Oops, not my bad. That's a <laughs> lot of garbage! In X rank oh, fashion but... again! The moment that In I. Fashion. Yeah, the moment that I say that both players are doing well, someone just completely turns the tables. Yeah, but then Sagittarius got a double Tetris and manages to stay safe. Yeah, just really, really fast gameplay here. Anything could happen at any second. So in Tetrio, um, how important would you say is maintaining your back-to-back -back bonus if you're not trying to play like a back-to-back -back chain pressure-oriented style? Because uh, in PBT, you know, back-to-back -back is a big source of extra damage, but I don't know how that applies to, to Tetrio. Um, I'd say, at least compared to PBT, it's definitely not that important like mm -hmm. you know even co or considering the multiplier system the multiplier system is now a uh, another uh really good way of doing killing spikes so mm -hmm. in ppt there's no multiplier like i don't know you either do a really big combo or actually okay you can you can correct me if i'm wrong because i don't play pbt but i think mm -hmm. the two ways to kill are like doing a really big combo or continuing back to back really well yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, but with the multiplier system in Tetrio, even infinite downstackers, they could kill you if they get lucky with garbage, or if they're really good at uh, not not covering their garbage holes. Mm-hmm. I see. Wow, 27 what spikes in world? That, was that was insane. Yeah, okay, although back-to-back -back isn't necessarily important, it still is a really good tool for killing. So yeah, Sagittarius mm -hmm. did a really good job there. I see. Oh my god, Hachi Spin from Sagittarius! Oh my god, I'm oh. such a big fan. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's interesting because I, I end up, when I'm watching Tetrio, I'm always very surprised at how willing players are to break their back-to-back. -back. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's just not something that I'm used to seeing to that extent. <laughs> oh. I think to that end, uh, um, I think back to back was. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but <laughs> it seems like a pretty good defensive tool, actually. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Like, you could be. Uh... Deliberately canceling with most of your back-to-backs and then Kind of wait for the opportunity to attack once you have a big chain and since in Tetrio 
The back to back counter. Uh, the back to back multiplier changes as, or the bigger your chain becomes. Mm -hmm. Like, some people will play defensively until they get maybe plus two for back to back or plus three, and then they'd start going ham. Mm. How, roughly how far into the chain does plus two and plus three come in? Um, roughly, I think, okay, plus one would be one back to back chain. Plus two, I think, yeah. is four? And then mm -hmm. plus three is eight, I think. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, those numbers are. It's very uh, possible to get those big multipliers from back to back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was actually a little lower than I was expecting, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, wow, Sagittarius setting up the 6 3, but ends up having to start clearing it away in favor of downstacking. Yeah, and very well, or downstacking very well there. Yeah. But again, Ends more garbage. Ends up being but just, wow, clean garbage just clears all of it right away. <laughs> this is so volatile. Real. Uh, I think Sagittarius there was, wanted to be able to count to four, but misheld and was not able to. Now on the back foot, but not for long. <laughs> Fortunate miss drop from Broden. Very creative fix, though. I think, especially at this level, miss drops are kind of way less fatal because players know how to deal with them. Mm, yeah. yeah. Broden's back in the game, doing out some back to back pressure. Going for this STSD on the right side over here. Not nearly enough to kill, but forces Sagittarius to cancel. A little bit of cheese coming over on Broden's board. Very interesting Kaiden setup. They Put the overhang on the side that their well is on, so oh. they have to break their back to back. Unfortunate. And I believe took the T speed mini there so that they would keep back to back for their for their Tetris afterwards on Broden's side. Oh, good strategy. We're approaching the two minute, two and a half minute mark. Oh, the game ends at 2 yeah. minutes and 22 seconds! Sagittarius taking that! Yeah, Burden got a little bit stuck on the top of his board there, and wasn't able to- They made a miss drop and wasn't able to bounce that get fast enough. Burden has to use the TPs for their overhang, and now gets two TPs when they do not have a T-spin. <laughs> Wow, big spikes from, or not spikes, but really consistent pressure from Sagittarius and tops out Broden there. We've got a very close game on our hands. It's four to five now. Now that is a big spike. Wow, yeah, and Sagittarius misdropping definitely does not help in dealing with that. He's able to stabilize though, and has a path down and counter spikes Broden just tops out wow Sagittarius not a match point the fillet spamming might be helping out Sagittarius <laughs> eh? yeah I think someone actually got timed out from spamming so sad <laughs> that's really it's funny worth it, though. it's worth it to support your your favorite players. Or maybe I shouldn't be saying this. My bad, UBC Esports. Don't spam, guys. And Sagittarius, as as you say that, just closes it out. So no more spamming needed. <laughs> no more spamming needed. Yes, 7 to 4. That from Sagittarius. Good games to both players. Yeah, at the at the start of the set, I definitely thought it definitely looked to me like Burden had the upper hand, but uh 
Sagittarius just, I guess, either warmed up or made the adjustments he needed to start just winning game after game. Yeah. Yes. Final mm -hmm. score is 17 to 27 to in favor of uh, UCSB. Yes. Very well played to all players. And yes, players saying GG's in the chat. Looks like we are now ready to head to our outro screen. Yay! That is. That is the outro screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's me on there. Oh my gosh, does that fizzle underneath the organizer section? Amazing. Hey yo, that's Let's me. Alright, so... I would like to first shout out the organizers. Who are... Plu, that's me. Orz, Benext, TS7, Fizzle, Fick, Doey, Andrew4043, Trooper4907, Boat Hotel, Daguerro, Hammond Pants, Cowbow, and Firestorm. And also our prize pool donators. Yes, there are a lot of prize pool donators now. Thank you all so much for donating donating to the prize pool. Uh, we have Ekpi who donated $40, Emrez who donated $30, Big Yarshi with another $30, and two anonymous people who donated $15 and $13.37, respectively. Okay, okay, fun fact. I didn't know this before, because I never set up a stream elements, but like, if you were to set up tipping on stream elements, which is what I did, your default options for tipping are $6.9, $4.20, and $13.37. Those are the default ones. I always thought that whenever people tip those, they were just trying to be funny, but they're literally the default. Oh my god. Yeah. So I guess this anonymous person just did that 13.37 because it's a default. It's kind of uh, funny, but yeah. That's pretty funny. I thought they were just trying to be clever. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, if you would like to donate more to the prize pool, you can donate it in the chat. I've sent the prize pool link. And... Oh yeah, okay. We also have some sponsors, year-long sponsors for UBC Esports. So, Kinton Ramen and Telus. Here are some messages from them. <clears throat> Kinton Ramen wishes everyone a happy new year. Make sure to visit the store on UBC campus during the holidays. Their dishes are perfect for the winter season and colder weather. And for Telus, the Telus Esports Series 2 is back, this time with the fan favorite Apex Legends. All game finals will be broadcast at the Northern Arena Twitch page, so be sure to tune in. What is the Northern Arena Twitch page? It's this. Yes, I do know there are some Apex fans who are watching the stream right now. So yeah, if you're interested in watching some high quality Apex gameplay, you can go follow this Twitch channel. Okay, last but not least, our special thanks to Osk, because Osk graciously let us uh, have a spot on the front page of Tetrio as a promo banner, and also is giving out badges for the winners of this tournament. And the badges were actually designed by Zynix, who is our other special thanks. Yes, Zynix has... Do I... Okay, I'm not sure if I have the badges anywhere on this. Uh, on the overlays, but if you look at the rule set, you'll see them and they're very cool. So yeah, thank you they for Zanix really cool. for uh, making the badges. And our last special thanks to Garbo, who made the uh, the base of these overlays. So yeah, Garbo made overlays for our UBC versus University of Waterloo show match last, last year. And they're pretty much the same as these ones, except a few things are alternated. So, yes, huge shout out to Garbo for making these overlays. Um, and on the top of the overlays, also to Ors for helping with the, uh, or 
not just helping, he basically made everything regarding the uh, crew battle player overlay real. format. That is so real, yes. Maybe I should also add Orz there, even though he's on the organizer section. But yeah, every everything relating to the players picking and like moving from the side to the center, that's Orz. And it did exist before uh, in Garbo's overlays, but Orz made them so much more easy to use. So yeah, huge shout out to Orz for doing that. Thank you, thank you. All right. I love ores. I love ores. I love ores. Do you have any last words, Fizzle? Uh, yeah, it's really, this is really cool. I think uh, doing it by university instead of by region, that like we did before, uh, is really nice. Uh, I didn't know UMD had so many players. I didn't oh. know all. I didn't know this many other schools had this many players. Oh. So, I think it's really cool that you pushed for this format. I also think it's very cool. I originally, when I was um, deciding this format, I was like, okay, I think we'll aim for eight teams to sign up. But this time there were 17 teams. So yeah, that was double my estimation, which is really awesome. Thank you all for uh, going out and recruiting, recruiting your players. I've seen all the hard work that you guys have put in. Okay, so with that being said... Oh wait, oh yeah, yeah, oh, okay, okay, okay. We're also gonna be streaming tomorrow, I forgot to mention, we're also gonna be streaming tomorrow. We'll, we'll be aiming to stream every weekend. So yeah, there's gonna be two more matches tomorrow. In the same format and all. So yeah, be sure to follow our Twitch channel so you get notifications when we stream again. Yeah, the matches tomorrow, by the way, will be UMD versus Berkeley at... 3 p.m. EST or noon PST, and then UCSD versus UIUC at 4:30 p.m. or 1:30 PST. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Thanks to Cheese Wiz 328 for the raid. We are just about to end, though. Thank you Ooh. very much for the raid. Very unfortunate timing. That's Cheese Wiz. This is so sad. <laughs> All right, well, it seems like that is all we have to say. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow, hopefully.